This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? My son, you do not remember me. I am your father. You must have many questions. Here in this this fortress of solitude, we may find the answers together. Even though you have been raised as a human being, you are not one of them. They can be a great people if they wish to be. They only like the light to show on the way. For this reason, above all, the capacity for good, I have sent them you, my son. You will be Superman. Uh, I'm Supergirl. Oh, sorry, give me a second. Okay, you come from a beehive of hippies. What? Your nemesis is a magical witch named Selena. That's some bullshit. And your big fight scenes are with an invisible monster, construction equipment, and a bumper car. Are you high? No, but I'm thinking about starting. And you should too. Hello, I'm a nostalgia critic guy, remember? So you don't have to. I love me some action ladies. Ellen Ripley, Wonder Woman, Sarah Connor, Tomb Raider, Cat Black Widow, Michelle Rodriguez, and fucking anything. Yes, women kicking ass in movies isn't exactly a new thing, but it has become more of a common thing. Since the beginning of film, there's always been doses of women duking it out, but because of the times, they were mostly kept in domesticated roles. Well, times change, and we have more options than ever of badass bitches doing badass shit. Well, that's cool and all, it does beg the question, what took so long? For a while, it seemed like for every 50 dude shooting a gun, we got one chick in a starring role doing the same. And they seem pretty few and far for quite a bit of time. Well, that's because studios aren't exactly the biggest fans of new things. I know what? And action men have proven to be big money makers for years. So whenever an action woman story came along, they rarely threw the same amount of care into it because there was already a fear it just wasn't gonna work as well. So a lot of shit was made. And if the shit didn't do well, it must have been because the lead in that shit was a dame and not because it was shit. Even a conversation years ago between Marvel and Sony showed that they didn't do women superheroes because the past ones failed. Yeah, clearly tits was the reason Elektra and Catwoman didn't do well. White Russian. No ice. Hold the vodka. Hold the cola. That line totally would have worked if a dude said it. And one of the movies often put on that list for delaying our cinematic action ladies, both figuratively and literally, is Supergirl. In 1984, after the success of Superman's three-ish hits, Supergirl had a budget of $35 million and made back only $14 million. For a long time, this was pointed to as the reason people would never see female superhero movies. Female shmemale, I wouldn't want to see a movie after seeing this! Granted, this was coming off of a very campy series, but there was usually an emotional weight and dignity that went along with that camp. This? is going to be rough. So let's take a gander at how things went so hilariously wrong. Let's see what happens when you mix shrooms with sniffing paint. This is Supergirl. On ice. Yeah, you know you're in trouble when the Masters of the Universe credits float by the writer's hookah smoke filled with more green stuff than Lex Luthor's lead case. We're showing what the Rockbiter shits out after eating coal, as a whole Kryptonian race lives in this Ikea beehive developed by a character played by Peter O'Toole. 
That's the fancy shadow of the real thing, which is the most we can hope for on this lonely old rock. There will Brando got respect playing this kind of part. What's my character's name? Zaltai. I'm screwed. Greetings. It's nice to finally know what a college safe space looks like. Zoltar is friends with Kara, played by Helen Slater, and she loves to marvel at his latest inventions while also longing to venture to Earth where her cousin Superman is. Did you not study six-dimensional geometry at school? I know the equations, I just can't see them in my head. Most great artists find mathematics troublesome, Kara. Chicks and math, right? This will go over great today. Saturn and Earth are in outer space, but we, we are in inner space. I can explain better by lifting your shower curtain nighty. What? What? Just talking? What? He explains that their city has two main power sources. One he keeps in his pocket. I borrowed it. Now where are my keys? <laughs> ah, here we are. Only four fatalities that time. And he uses it for... Dumb stuff. So I'm just inventing miracles. You have the power to move things a bit to the left. The science of hanging pictures will be changed forever. Let your imagination explode and give it a try. Uh, how much is she supposed to use her imagination? And what's supposed to explode? Zoltar kicks the power source over to Kara. You know, I'm starting to see why Krypton exploded. As she delights gripping her long vibrating stick on top of the ball she's currently holding in her hand. Okay, this was a porno. They kept all the dialogue the same, they just never put the sex in it. Put your fingers here, Kara, and press hard. It had to be some sort of mix-up. Damn it, I never should have written the Supergirl script and the porno at the same time! Wait a minute, if you can't find the porno script but you still have the movie script, is it possible you sent the wrong script to the studio? Oh sweet Jesus, I think you're right. <laughs> Jesus, that's them! It meant nothing! Hello? Hi, it's the director. We're a little confused about this scene where the old man touches the young girl's face. Uh, yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. And everybody is dressed in nightgowns? It's very modern. And then she's holding a long phallic rod over a ball she's playing with in her hand and then places it near her crotch? 80s! I guess that's a good point. This is the 80s. Do you mind if we cut the orgies, though? I think that's fair. She accidentally pokes a hole in their damn poorly secured city as the power source is sucked out. Ah! I'll save you, whoever I am! You took the Omega Hedron! That's not correct! I lost the Omega Hedron! Oh no, Father, I did. Father? I've seen identical twins that have more age variations than they do. Kara. No matter who, without it, this city can't survive more than a few days. Kara feels responsible for losing the power source, so she takes Zoltar's machine to try and follow it. Kara! Stop her! She's escaping our pasty white cult! Actually, is there another kind? While Zoltar assures she'll be saved going from inner space to outer space, he has a different fate. I must be sent to the Phantom Zone. Your suffering will be short. Mine, forever. You seem weirdly okay with that. Ah yes, the Phantom Zone, where they show Joe Schumacher's Phantom of the Opera movie 24-7. Actually, it's a dark, hellish wasteland where you'll starve to death. Oh, that's... almost as bad. Meanwhile on Earth, Faye Dunaway plays Madame Selina, a stuck-up villain who enjoys taking picnics with her lover Nigel, played by Peter Cook. They're desecrating my corpse! Such a pretty world. I can't wait until it's all mine. It's a lifetime to discover the secrets of black magic from the ancient grimoire. Wow, you really tried to make that sound like a normal thing people say. I'm pretty sure I saw that in one of those many pictures of women laughing while eating salad. But the power source plunges to Earth with flaming fire and powerful speed, plopping like a urinal cake in a men's room. Immortality be upon this one. She is a sharer of the sun's everlasting life. This world will keep her forever. Oh, I mean, what's this? I've just outgrown you, Nigel. She takes to her car and decides to leave Nigel behind. But what about marriage? 
while using the radio to trap some painful product placements. That's TWA. Never has flying been easier. They also decide to advertise their own lame shit. Superman has indeed embarked on a special peace-seeking mission. Still a better backstory than Superman Returns. It looks like Kara also arrives. In her tights and cape, underwater, completely dry, with a string pulling her out. Oh my god, that is way too much stupid on my plate. I can't possibly handle it all. I guess I'll just talk about the stupidest part, the costume. I mean, yeah, the Superman costume is silly, but it was at least given to him at a very specific time, after he found out who he was, and it's like he's wearing the uniform of his planet. What the hell is her excuse? This is Zoltar. If you've stolen my ship and you happen to be a woman, please wear the spandex and miniskirt I have left for you in the... I guess I'm not seeing any place I could have put it. Bottom line, dress hard so I can at least fantasize about you as payment for stealing my property. If you happen to be a man, same applies. Why? Oh, I shouldn't have sniffed that glue after leaving the Wonka Vader. Why? She observes her surroundings and tries to figure this whole Earth thing out. Hello, I'm gonna call you Charlie. Goodbye, Charlie. Will you be my next Charlie? Oh, so her death vision does the exact opposite of death vision. God, this is gonna be so lame! She flies past every romance novel cover the stock footage library had and comes across the city of Chicago. But the poster says she's in New York, flying out of Lady Liberty's armpit and into our hearts. You know what, fine! Chicago doesn't need you, superhero movie! We have the Dark Knight and... Dark Knight's really good! She drops by the city and discovers two scumbags played by Matt Frewer and Stacy Keach. Yeah, this movie's weird enough to put them together. Check out the view from back here, Eduardo. Oh. Stop hey. that. I only let father teacher figure stroke me! We're out looking for a good time. And you just won the brass ring, baby. Why are you doing this? It's just the way we are. All A&W employees are grab happy. On account we never get laid because we're A&W employees. <gasps> All right, it says two truckers approach her, play with her skirt, and then she blows them. You mean like with her super breath? Yes. Yes, I do. Meanwhile, Madam Selena and Nigel throw a party in her secret lair that's an amusement park haunted house with tons of rich middle-aged people attending. Please, I really can't do a second helping! I am considering nothing less than world domination. These are my foot soldiers, Nigel. My army of the night. When they're let out of their retirement homes, they're quite deadly! Look! The Six Flags guy! Total world domination material! Nigel, I think, tries hitting on one of the party goers, but Selena uses her newfound magic to... This. Then the witch turns the lady upside down, spreads her legs, and has her spinning while her dress falls over her head. Lex Luthor would have done the same. Would he? Yes. Would he? Yes! Kara flies in wearing her tights coming across a girl's college with pandas. Remember a time when that sounded weird? And she attempts to blend in. how Brando had to spend years training his son how to use his powers, and here it's like, Walk behind a tree and one of our first year effects students will take over. Jeez, another bar from you student. They're really scraping the bottom of the barrel these days. Consider yourself a bitch! So she applies for the school, almost as if she's totally forgotten the power source for her entire species is at stake. Without it, this city can't survive more than a few days. Yeah! I took my time flying around, looking at horsies. I even applied for a few classes while I was there. And that's why I'm talking to your tombstone. I have never before in my life laid eyes on you, have I, young lady? No, sir, I'm new here. Well, obviously you're new here if I've never laid eyes on you before. Is it really that weird you don't recognize a student at your giant university? I know every girl and their feet here. You're just not ringing any bells. 
She says her name is Linda Lee, and she quickly writes up a recommendation letter from her cousin, Clark Kent. Oh, and get this, Nigel just happens to teach there. An orphan? We don't expect to be treated any differently on that account, Miss Lee. One way or another, we're all alone on this miserable little planet. Isn't that what Leonard Moulton said in the description of this movie? She's accepted into a and Presents College as she's introduced to her roommate, Lucy Lane. Why, you wouldn't be related to... Your sister! Lois! Ah, oh, yes, that's the one. What a coincidence! I'm Lex Luthor's second uncle from Metropolis! Nigel is Perry White's chemistry teacher from Smallville! And Selina is Otis's dominatrix from Eagle River! Eagle River?! So who's your cousin? Clark Kent. Clark Kent's your cousin? You're putting me on! You know him? Do I know him? Am I the thought-out gene splicing of Michael Sheen and Gollum? Do you know him? Superman? My sister's got something going with the big guy. Yep, that's as close to a Christopher Reeve cameo as you're gonna get. A real hunk. Then Superman's cousin lustfully reaches out and gut ups a picture of his chest. Okay, I'll tell you the truth. Oh, that seems fine. It is. Yeah, there's actually a comic where they talk about marrying each other despite being cousins. Ew. What? I mean... Ew. Yeah, ew. So while Kara tries to figure... bras out... Anyways, I could ask him to... What are you doing? <sighs> oh, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Madam Sabrina tries out a love spell on the college landscaper named Ethan, played by Hart Bachner. Take a spider off his web. Okay, did that spider scream? Off his web. There'd be a lot less dead spiders in the world if they could make cuddly little sounds like that. Oh God, no, please, Jesus, think of my kids! Oh, thank you, sir. Boil the nut in oil into which has been added some of the web. Boy, the chilling adventures of Sabrina isn't living up to the hype like I thought it would. Ethan reaches the house of Mad Madam Dim as she sneaks him the potion to see if it works. You know, I thought we might get to know each other a little more before we uh, dig in and talk real turkey. Like they say, MILF, it does a body good. Look, I can get you a Rolex, but that's the extent of what I can offer. He gets lightheaded, though, and panics, running away. Selena uses her magic mirror, because superheroes and fairy tales are the same thing. And he stumbles across to where Linda is about to have lunch. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, look, they couldn't get Superman, so they got Jimmy Olsen, the person you most like to see Superman punch. Thanks for inviting me, Lucy. I'm yeah. glad you could come, Jimmy. <laughs> well, I was the only original cast member you could afford. But Selena tries using magic to grab Ethan and bring him back. Maybe if I show it my butt, that'll help. Even for a series that has Superman drunk at a bar, this is pretty silly. But Supergirl appears to finally do some actual crime fighting. Oh, hey, Supergirl, what's up? You're doing such a good job. I really love the review and everything. Thank you for that. It's very kind of you to say. Don't mention it. I, I do have one small question, if that's okay. Oh, well, absolutely. What is it? What is wrong with this movie? We're already halfway through this film, and I'm only now doing something action-related? Well, I just don't think they really knew what to do with your character back then. Lady superheroes, for some reason, were really awkward for people to write in the past. Well, does it get better for me in the future? Oh, absolutely. Why, just one year later, they kill you! What?! Yeah, in a comic series called Crisis on Infinite Earths. And you don't seem to show back up for a really, really, really long time. Balls! But they do bring you back in the 90s! Really? How does that go? About as 90s as you would expect. Who the hell are you?! I'm 90s Supergirl! You're the badass hero everyone's supposed to get behind. I know I look a little dated, but people can still take me seriously. Come on, Quinn. We're gonna be late for class. What? Don't worry, I won't tell your five boyfriends you weren't a human fashion accessory for a minute. I am not a high school bimbo. I'm a superhero! Oh. Of course. Any 
anyway, even though my outfit is like a little distracting, doesn't make me any less. Okay, Lola. If you want to defeat the mean team, you have to distract them with your feminine wiles. Dude, I am not a sexy cartoon bunny. I am a superhero. Oh, of course. You see, you're going to be timeless. Want to hear about the time you dated a horse? No! Twice? Hi everybody, I'm Chaplin. Hi Chaplin, how you doing there? You enjoying looking out the window? I sure am! That's great! Hey Chaplin, what are your thoughts on Stamps.com? Stamps.com? I love Stamps.com! So much that I just want to look out this window and ignore you! I just think it's great! Oh, that's fantastic, Chaplin. But tell me, why do you think I like Stamps.com so much? Well, I think to myself, who in the world still goes to the- I want to go over here right now! All this thinking makes me want to go on a leisurely stroll. As I was saying, it just makes me think who in the world still goes to the post office and why it makes me want to shout it on the mountain, which I think is over here. Is there a mountain over here? No, but I think much better behind the couch, my, my great thinking couch. You see, Stamps.com brings the convenience of the post office to you. No need to interrupt your workday to fight traffic to get to the post office. I'm gonna turn the light a little brighter because I'm magic. There we go! Chaplin, that stuff you said about Stamps.com is fantastic. Can you tell me more? I can, but, but over here! Follow me! We need Stamps.com because it just makes me want to run back to where I was before! Because I'm incredibly calm and the camera doesn't scare me in the least. But you know what else relaxes me? Stamps.com. And saves you time and money. With discounts you can't even get at the post office. Stamps.com brings all the services of the U.S. post office right to your computer. Whether you're a small office sending invoices, an online seller shipping out products, or even a warehouse sending out thousands of packages a day. Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. Simply use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. Away I go to tell the world about Stamps.com. Well, I've already talked about over there. I guess I'll go over here because I have short-term memory loss. And once your mail is ready, just hand it to your mail carrier or drop it off in a mailbox. It's that simple. Chaplin, I am riveted. Tell me more. You got it. With Stamps.com, you get five cents off every first class stamp. And up to 40% off priority mail. Not to mention it's a fraction of the cost of those expensive postage meters, which are up there. Yeah, they certainly are somewhere up there. I see things sometimes. You certainly do, Chaplin. But tell me, is Stamps.com a no-brainer? That's exactly what it is. Saving you time and money. It's no wonder over 700,000 small businesses use Stamps.com. And with my promo code, Nostalgia, you get a special offer that includes a four-week free trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Nostalgia. That's Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Nostalgia for your special offer today. Go to Stamps.com and never go to the post office again. It makes me want to yawn with joy and excitement. Good night, Chaplin. Good night! Stamps.com. Hey, you can see us at C2E2 in Chicago, Illinois, February 28th to March 1st, booth 102. We have two panels this year, a Channel Awesome panel Sunday at 3.15, and a Movies Everybody Disagrees With You on panel Friday at 6.45. But if you can't make either of those, drop by booth 102 to say hi. You can also see us at Midwest Gaming Classic in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, April 3rd to the 5th. We'll have a booth and panels there as well. Drop on by and say hello, we'd love to see you guys there. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitch, Monday through Saturday. Playing a lot of games, telling a lot of jokes, and having a lot of fun. Hope to see you there. So Supergirl arrives to stop the panic in the streets. Oh, 
She's so not used to our Earth ways. This is just what happens when Popeye runs out of chicken sandwiches. Honestly, this is one of the better occurrences. Ah, Jimmy Olsen, the only Superman character to be defeated by Hay. I'll save you from this live action Donald Duck cartoon! Linda changes back, and naturally, Ethan sees her and immediately falls in love due to the spell. You're gonna be alright. There's no broken bones. I hope this hasn't put you off construction excavators. Statistically speaking, it is the safest way to travel. I love you. You love me? <gasps> With all my heart forever. <laughs> Linda! Boopy! I'm your white knight! Bird, a free and careless wing was I through many a smiling spring. The cold repulse, the look askance, the lightning of love's angry glad stay. Yeah, love apparently also ups your vocabulary to Malkovich levels. To my own proclivities are Damn open it! lamented fact. Meanwhile, Selena and Clyde start to put together that Supergirl must be one of Nigel's students. I worry about everything. It's my job, Stan. Back. Oh, come on now. She's just a teenager. A 21-year-old teenager. Seriously, girls should be put in quotes. Take shape. She unleashes an evil creature called the Shadow to track her down and destroy her. Zool, motherfucker. Oh, wait, is this Supergirl? Oh, hell no. I'm going after the Stranger Things kid. As Linda starts to realize she kind of likes being violated and even practices kissing in the mirror. Fun fact, that's how Jared Leto wishes kissing worked. The monster finds her and attacks. And of course, to save on money, the monster is invisible. Are you telling me they didn't do enough A&W shoutouts to afford a monster that isn't just air? Jesus, what a bunch of cheapskates! By the way, this episode is brought to you by... No! She takes a lamppost into the sky, gets it struck by lightning, and uses the electricity to kill the monster. Like they teach you in school. Every time! Send a man to do a woman's job, and that's what you get. You have no idea if that monster's a male, I'm insulted. I love how the head of the dorm sees her in the costume and tells her to go back into uniform, which just confirms changing her hair color really doesn't disguise her at all. Get out of that ridiculous costume! Yes, ma'am. And cover your legs! Yes, ma'am. Next, you'll be telling me the removal of clothes doesn't camouflage He-Man. You know what you're both missing! That's better. Linda locates where Selena is, but unfortunately, Ethan locates Linda, still under the love spell. Lovely Linda Lee. These roses pale beside thee. Well, thank you, but and I'm... And sweet chocolates for my sweet Linda. Man, the third season of You looks surprisingly heartwarming. Please? Well, all right, but just for a minute. I suppose stopping a satanic mistress of the black arts can be put aside for flirting. This whole movie is based on me putting things off, you know. Her soft caress did at once renew the beating of his broken heart. Are you crazy? Marry me. Oh, I love a romance based on a person's complete absence of free will. What a touching scene. Oh, right, there's like a ton of lives to save, but boys! Selena places Ethan in the world's fucking weirdest bumper cars and performs a one-woman chorus line. Supergirl encages her, though, and gets Ethan to safety. Just when I thought this movie couldn't show me any more fucking bizarre shit. Oh, you thought the Superman Lois flying scene was romantic? Well, you've never seen it in a bumper car shape like Tom Brady bookends, have you? What's going on? Whoa, put me down. She flies into those landmark Illinois mountains as Ethan tries to figure out what's going on. Where's my Linda? Take it easy. Linda has brown hair. You don't have brown hair. a promising idea and then throughout the whole thing went. Meanwhile, Selena calls upon Nigel's talents in black magic to try and get Ethan back in a sequence that, well, defies explanation, honestly. Are they trying to hypnotize us? 
You will tell people this is a good movie. You will tell them the critics were wrong and Linda Carter doesn't deserve to smell Helen Slater's shit. Please, Please we're, we're desperate. desperate. Well, John Waters just wished upon the star. Oh my god. I get the restraints around his arms, but why the multitude around his crotch? Was Nigel like, I've seen you Weinstein many a young man. This one is mine. I've been waiting three hours for you to kiss me. Wait, what? Selena steals Nigel's rod. Uh, no, the other one. There you go. And uses the combined powers to create her own evil fortress in town. So long, Chicago. Still doing nothing cool with you. Boy, those cars are driving fast. I will destroy the Power Rangers or my name isn't Selena Repulsa. <laughs> Supergirl crashes through the window, and by crash I mean politely opens, as Selena entraps her in... An invisible wall! Why don't you make everything invisible? Look! An invisible dragon! Beware my invisible army! Look, Margot Kidder! She's invisible! She sends Supergirl flying through space. Hey you! Neil! Ah, yeah, forget it. As she's sent to the Phantom Zone, where her powers disappear. Ha, uh. eh, that was graceful as how she usually flies. Oh, this rock has my blood in it. Wait, my blood is my blood! Meanwhile, the students back at home have a foolproof way of getting rid of this evil supervillain. Protesting! Yeah, we're in a college town, all right? Tease them! Oh, if only we could protest with complete anonymity! Computer nerds, get on it! While Selena imprisons them, Supergirl comes across an old friend in the Phantom Zone. Zoltar! Squirt. Zoltar, it's me. It's, it's Kara. Squirt. Then the young woman covered in goo approaches her touchy-feely mentor and is told to open her mouth and receive a squirt. Why haven't you fired me yet? I'm not a smart person. Now back to the scene where a man's genitals are chained to a bed. Zoltar discusses the one way out as of course it's incredibly dangerous and they'll only have one shot at it. Selena watches their attempt on her magic mirror. falls behind, but Supergirl makes it through to finish off Selena. You've had your fun, Selena. The game is finished. <laughs> Back to the Phantom Zone. That was too easy. No, she instead uses her powers to mildly annoy her to death. Oh, if only I could fly. I could fly! Up here! summons, honestly, a pretty cool-looking monster, but don't worry, what little cred was won will be lost with this. I can't watch, it's too lame in effect. So get this, she breaks free and then shrinks down to spin around her. It's the Tasmanian Devil Speedy Gonzalez Ant-Man power everybody knows she has. She raises Selena up to the monster, which for some reason means he wants to destroy her now. I'm sure this is explained somewhere, but then I'd have to rewind it and I just don't have the bravery. Hey, come on! You're the genie! You're the genie! The day is saved, the power source is returned, and... I guess this was a thing. Any super property where Jimmy gets laid is wrong, ugly, and wrong. Goodbye, Linda. Wow, she flew right through my brain. Hey, am I still under that spell or what? Eh, who cares? Off to stop Batman. She goes back to inner space, presumably using the power source, and... We're done! That's it! Yeah, where Superman had a nice epilogue that took its time, this has Supergirl humming her theme song underwater. And that was... one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, as much as I've crapped on it, it truly is one of those films that's so bad, it's a ton of fun. The choices made are so weird and baffling, and the inconsistencies in everything from story to acting to effects is part of what makes it a surreal joy. 
I do kind of feel bad as this director has done plenty of good things and even those actors are clearly trying. They do have unique deliveries that stand out and maybe in a more focused production they could have brought a lot of charm out of these characters. But as written, they're laughably bad. But at least they are enjoyable in their own bizarre way. If you're on the lookout for campy madness that has no idea what it wants to be or how it wants to be, then look up in the sky. It's a turd, it's a pain, it's Supergirl. So that's it. Outside of comics, I won't be remembered for anything other than being a campy joke. Well, you never know. Maybe the future has something good in store. Hello? Supergirl! Long time no you. I thought we agreed you've ruined my life enough. It's alright, they're giving me another chance to turn it all around. Really? Get this. You're gonna have your own live-action show! What? That's amazing! With musical numbers, a lot of goofy humor, and some of the actors from the original movie. What? Oh, and we're also giving you a cartoon show called DC Superhero Girls, where you all go to a super high school full of girls. Seriously? Oh, and another show called Justice League Action, where we make you look like Betty Boop if she were an anime character. Stop! I've had it! I'm done with this! I've been through every crazy reboot, retool, and revamp that you can destroy! Okay, I am a complicated character that deserves a little dignity and a little respect! You think any of those shows are gonna show me that kind of courtesy? Well, if you don't do it, we'll just find another Supergirl. Oh, fine! Get whoever you want! I'm not falling for it again, mister! There's no way that you can make a critical and crowd-pleasing hit with- Supergirl, Justice League Action, and DC Superhero Girls are critical crowd-pleasing hits. With their smart writing, great sense of humor, and surprising respect for their characters, only a fool would have passed on these projects. That seems very specific, but that's what they're paying me to say! Well, I hear about the time you became a saleswoman for Radio Shack? Beep. Squirt. Squirt. Hey, Doug Walker here. AIDS Foundation Houston is this week's charity shout out. This organization has been in the fight against HIV AIDS since the first cases were reported in 1981. Immediately after the first cases began to surface, a group of caring community members came together to provide food and clothing for those devastated by this disease. As expressed in their mission statement, AIDS Foundation Houston leads the innovative efforts in the prevention of new HIV infections and empowers individuals, families, and communities affected by AIDS to create and sustain healthy lives. They envision a supportive community free of new HIV infections where individuals affected lead healthy and productive lives without stigma or discrimination. With passion and creativity, their staff provide direct care services to over 7,000 men, women, and children and prevention education. With a four-star rating on Charity Navigator, you can click on the link and see the many ways you can help this wonderful organization achieve its goal. Thank you.